Android Studio Electric Eel version 2022.1.1 is now available for download on the Stable channel. This release contains many new features and improvements, including the new Locket UI enabled by default, the ability to see data from Firebase Crashlytics right within the IDE with app quality insights, improvements to Jetpack Compose previews, new options for emulators and devices, and more. Let's take a look at what's new in detail. First, Lockcat has been updated to make it easier to parse, query, and track logs. The new Lockcat UI has been available to try as an opt-in feature in Dolphin, and it's now enabled by default in Electric Eel, including a number of quality of life and stability fixes since Dolphin. We've already covered its new features in the Dolphin release video and release notes, so you can check those out to learn more. They are linked in the description. To highlight just a couple things, the new UI includes better formatting for logs and a smarter search field with auto-completion support to filter for the logs you want to see. For example, you can filter for the package name of your app or search by tags or messages of log entries. You can also configure the formatting for the logs to see just the information you want to focus on. There's a standard and a compact view available, and you can customize these as well. For example, I can show tags in the compact view and then choose to use this view by default. Next up, let's take a look at the new App Quality Insights tools, which let you browse and investigate crash data from Firebase Crashlytics directly in Android Studio without having to jump back and forth between the IDE and the browser. To get started, sign into your Google account in Android Studio to connect to Firebase, and then open the App Quality Insights panel. Here, you can filter your crash events to show the most recent crashes or crashes from a specific version of your app. For each entry, you can see the number of affected users, the affected device types and Android versions, and of course the stack trace, which allows you to quickly navigate to the place in the code where the crash happened and get started on fixing it. You'll also see gutter icons in your source files, which mark the lines that show up in crash reports. Click these to view the associated crashes and their details. Now, let's take a look at updates to design tools and previews. For Compose previews, you can now edit the device parameter of the preview annotation to specify the configuration of the device. You can choose from reference devices or create your own. Auto-completion will help you with what options are available and what values they accept. This works together nicely with multi-preview annotations, which are available since Dolphin. With these, you can create a single custom annotation that has previews configured for various devices. Then, you can use this multi-preview annotation to quickly create previews for multiple device configurations. While we're at previews, in earlier versions of Android Studio, you had to manually refresh them after making changes. In Electric Eel, previews update automatically after you make code changes, allowing you to iterate on your UI faster. If your code contains compilation errors during editing, previews are temporarily paused and then resumed again when the errors are fixed. You can always see the status of the previews on the indicator in the top right corner. To make it easier to track down performance problems, the Layout Inspector tool now highlights recomposing composables as those recompositions happen. This, combined with the recomposition counts, makes it easy to track down when there are too many unexpected recompositions happening in your app and to see which parts of the UI are recomposing. For example, navigating in the Now in Android sample app, I can see that the bottom navigation items and the tabs I'm clicking on are getting recomposed as the selection changes. And I can also see the corresponding recomposition counts changing at the same time. New for XML layouts, visual linting now runs in the background to check for issues across different form factors, detecting problems such as overlapping or non-visible elements on a given device configuration. Any issues found in your layout will show up in the Problems panel. This panel is now a unified place for all the problems reported by various tools within Android Studio, including visual linting, navigation, and Compose-related issues. For example, in this layout file, we can see two validation problems, a text view covered by an image view on certain screen sizes, and an image view which is partially out of bounds in some configurations. You can open the Layout Validation panel to see your layouts rendered for the various device sizes. Selecting a problem in the Problems panel will highlight which configurations are affected by that problem. Moving on, let's take a look at new features around Build Next. The Build Analyzer tool provides you insight into what happens during your builds. This now includes a summary of any dependency downloads that happened. You can use this information to determine the impact of downloads on your build and to spot problems such as downloads happening during incremental builds when they shouldn't. 
The information here is broken down by repositories, so you can see where each dependency was downloaded from. You can also see if a repository takes a long time to serve artifacts, or has a high number of failed requests. If that's the case, you should consider removing the repository if possible, or moving it lower in your repository configuration so that other repositories take priority over it. The Upgrade Assistant that helps you upgrade your project's Android Gradle plugin version also got more helpful in Electric Eel. After performing a version upgrade, the Assistant will attempt to sync your project and report whether it was successful. It now also gives you a summary of what steps were executed. If the project sync fails after the upgrade, you can use the new Revert button to undo the changes to your build files. We announced Google Play SDK Index earlier this year, which provides you information about various SDKs that you can integrate into your app. SDK developers can mark versions of their SDKs as outdated in the SDK Index, and this information is now shown directly in Android Studio. If you're using a version marked as outdated, you'll see a lint warning on the dependency in your build file to let you know that you should update it. Similarly, the Project Structure dialog will show the same warnings on the outdated dependencies and you can navigate to their Play SDK Index page from here to learn more. Last but not least, let's take a look at what's new with emulators and devices. First, when creating an emulator in Electric Eel, you now have the option to create a desktop emulator. These let you test how your app behaves on devices such as Chromebooks. There are a handful of interactions that are different on these devices that you should test with your app. For example, apps can be freeform resized or minimized, which your app should handle gracefully. Another new option for emulators is the Experimental Resizable Emulator. This virtual device helps you test your app on different screen sizes without having to run multiple emulators. After creating and launching a resizable emulator, you can use the Display Mode menu to switch between different device sizes and see how your app behaves. Finally, if you prefer testing on a physical device, you can now mirror the device to Android Studio and interact with it similarly to how you'd use an emulator. This is an opt-in feature in Electric Eel, so before using it, you first need to go to the experimental page of settings and enable mirroring. Then, connect your device through ADB, either wired or wireless, and it will show up in the Running Devices panel. From here, you can interact with it much like you're used to with emulators. Mouse and keyboard events are forwarded, and you can use the controls on the toolbar to input button presses or to rotate the device. You can also drag and drop files onto the mirror device, just like on an emulator. If the file is an APK, it will be installed, which can be really useful for quickly testing a build. For other file types, the file will be copied to the device's download folder. That's it for Electric Eel. Download it and start using it today. You can also already try the next version of Android Studio, Flamingo. Please provide feedback about it on our issue tracker, which is linked in the description. Give this video a like if you're as excited about these new features as we are, and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss future updates. See you next time.